Hey sea lions, uh, I'm up at the cabin. It's in Pollock Pines. It's very cold up here. There's even some snow on the ground. I thought that I would reread our chapters for Stella Diaz has something to say. Some of the videos didn't work out and some of you may have forgotten. So I'm going to start back with chapter one and then we'll kind of go through and if you've already listened to chapter one, you can skip forward to the next one. So chapter one. It says, the smell of albondigas fills the house when my brother Nick and I come home. Time for our weekly appointment, says Nick, walking in the direction of the kitchen. I nod. My mouth starts to water as I follow him toward the sound of sizzling food. Around the corner, I see Mom performing her magic over a large pot on the stove. Her eyes are closed as she carefully tastes some tomato sauce with a wooden spoon. She's still wearing her work clothes, except she has an apron on and slippers instead of high heels. Mom works every day in an office, which means she can't make dinner. Oops. That's what happens when I put it in a tree. <laughs> she can't make dinner weeknights, except for Fridays, better known as our weekly appointment. It's also the time we play board games past our regular bedtime. Miss Bebes, Mom exclaims when she sees us. She spreads her arms wide to give us big hugs and kisses. Can I help, Mom? I ask, wiping lipstick off my cheek. Of course, Stella. Do you want to boil the espaghetti while I go change mi ropa? She tugs at her clothes and takes off her apron. I say, see, sí! but instead I giggle. While Mom speaks both English and Spanish perfectly, strangers say that she has an accent. To me, it's just the way she speaks, although every time in a while I can hear that she says a word a little funny like e spaghetti. When mom returns to the kitchens, she's wearing an oversized shirt and jeans instead of her business suit. She leans over a pot of sizzling albondigas, wiggles her nose, and takes a deep sniff. Mom says you can always smell when the food is ready. There's a little picture of a meatball right there. She looks at me as she gives me the thumbs up. Stella, grab the platos, por favor, says Mom. I put the plates on the table while Nick helps Mom carry the food. She scoops up some e spaghetti and albondigas onto my plate. While she passes it to me, she makes sure to pull off the bay leaf. Mom says that bay leaves give the albondigas their extra sabor, but we shouldn't eat it. Nick serves himself. Mom still likes to treat him like a baby, even though I'm in third grade. As soon as we start eating together, Mom asks, So how was your week at school, niños? Nick starts talking right away as he swirls his E spaghetti on his fork. Pretty good. I think I'm going to join the basketball team this year. Jason and Adam are joining too. Nick is in English class, and the middle school kids like to play sports. Mom smiles. You're going to get so strong. Nick blushes. Yeah. Plus, it's going to make it even easier to beat Stella at arm wrestling. I'll just practice more, I say, and stick out my tongue. Mom doesn't get mad. She rarely does. She only gets mad when there's hair pulling or name calling, which doesn't happen too often. She also won't take sides as much as I want her to do it sometimes. Instead, she just laughs it off. But what about you, Stella? How was your week? Amazing! Today, Miss Bell said, we are going to start sustained reading in class. That means we get to read quietly. I think I'm going to read about fishes because of Poncho, I say. Mom says, that sounds fun. I bet Poncho is going to appreciate it. And here's the little fish on the page. Poncho is my beta fish. That is the type of fish that likes to be alone. They can be as colorful as a rainbow, but Poncho's mostly blue, which is my favorite color. I like that Poncho likes to be alone and is okay being quiet. Mom winks at me. Anything else? Oh, Miss Bell also said we are going to have a new student next week. I hope it's a girl so she can play with Jenny and me. It's hard to play tag when there's only two people, I say as I slurp up a noodle. Well, I'm certain whoever it is, they will be nice. Just be sure to make them feel comfortable and be my sweet Stella, she says. I nod and say, promise. 
Mom has no idea how excited I am about the new student. School has been a little lonely without my best friend Jenny in my class. I've been trying hard to make more friends, but it's not so easy. The first day of class especially didn't go so well this year. I could barely talk because my stomach was in knots all day long. Then, when I did talk, I messed up. I had to read aloud a paragraph I wrote about my summer break, and I said some of the words wrong. That made some of the kids in my class like Jessica Anderson laugh. I hope this new kid is a girl who's a lot like me. Maybe she loves to draw or has a fish too or can run fast like me. Maybe she can run fast like you guys too. I'm sure she might be a little lonely or scared on her first day like I was. I'm sure she'll appreciate my help. I'll show her the tricks around the school, like which lunch lady gives extra french fries. Or which bathrooms aren't so nice. I look over at Nick. Did you learn anything cool today? It's one of my favorite things to ask him at dinner. Everything you get to learn in eighth grade just seems so interesting. He thinks for a second. Well, we studied tornadoes and all types of weather and science. The videos were pretty cool. Tornadoes? They're scary. Wait, can that happen in Chicago, Nick? He starts to snicker. Whenever he snickers, I know that he is up to no good. Yes, he says. Tomatoes can happen in Chicago. I cross my arms. <coughs> Nick, you know I said tornadoes, not tomatoes. I heard tomatoes, and you shouldn't be afraid of them. Then he gently elbows me. Now, Brussels sprouts, those are scary. Guess I'm making Brussels sprouts next Friday, says Mom, winking at me. Nick groans. Ew. Okay, no more vegetable talk. Nick is pretty stellar most of the time, but he can still be an annoying older brother sometimes. Nick knows it especially bothers me when he laughs when I mess up my words. Or even letter sounds. And when I do, I turn roja like a tomato. That's because the letters sound a little different in English and Spanish. I'm taking a class to help me, but I don't like that I have to take it. I definitely don't like people making fun of me. And there's a little tomato there. Okay. Excellent. That was chapter one, and Stella Diaz has something to say. I miss you guys very much. Hopefully you liked this chapter up in the mountains.